Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. I've got the latest in the Mossberg MC series. This is the MC2C, which is the successor to the MC1SC. The MC1SC with a subcompact, this they're calling a compact. And this is the latest entry in the double stack and a single stack size gun war that's going on. The P365XL is one of the other ones that's really popular in this category and it directly competes with things like the Glock 40, 48 and the other single stack thin guns but the this series and this design puts more of a double stack capacity in a single stack size so go ahead and show that it's unloaded so what I've got here is a almost full three finger grip and when I do put a magazine in it unless you've got a really large hand you are getting a three finger grip but it's only 1.1 inches thick so it's a very thin gun it's a single stack size but it has basically double stack capacity this is similar to what you'd get in a Glock 19 from a capacity standpoint in a much smaller thinner gun it's 7.1 inches front to back it's 4.9 inches tall with the flush mag in it and 1.1 inches thick and this one has 13 rounds in this configuration and with a slightly larger extended magazine you can get 15. And that's the other thing that's going on with this particular competition among the different manufacturers is trying to squeeze that one more round. So this is one more round in each of the magazines than the uh, P365. So that's kind of a little capacity war going on. And we all benefit because what we end up getting is small compact guns with reasonable capacity that are ergonomic and comfortable. Speaking of ergonomics and comfort, you can see the grip is well contoured. It's got a bit of a flare to it, so that it does fit your hand well. And it's got kind of a one single finger groove that's kind of subtle and light. So regardless of where your fingers land, you're going to fit comfortably on it. And it's got texturing in all the right places where your hand's going to be to get a good grip on it, even across the back. But it's not scratchy, it's not sandpapery, it really doesn't bite into your hand. It's very comfortable to operate. You do not get replaceable back straps, which is a common theme with these single stack size guns. Most of them don't offer the replaceable back straps. Even the Glocks, which have replaceable back straps and all of their Gen 4 and newer, don't have them on the single stack or the thin line that they're, they're calling it. It's a nice looking gun. It's well finished with a DLC coating. There is a variant of this available in polished stainless steel. It's got front and rear serrations. And they're really good serrations. They catch easily, but they don't really bite into your hands or cut you up. And it's got very nice three-dot sights. There's also a variation of this that are available with the Tritium Pro, the True Glow, Tritium Pro night sights. And those sights, if you have them, they're, a tritium, dur they're tritium at night, so they're night sights, and they're fiber optic during the day. So unlike a lot of night sights, they're easy to see day or night and you can order the gun factory with those options. There is a flavor of this available with a cross bolt safety. Basically it's a little button that crosses here. You, know, you push it one way and it's safe, one way and it's fire. Similar to a shotgun. And of course Mossberg is primarily known as a shotgun company. So their thumb safety isn't a thumb safety, it's a finger safety and it's a cross bolt. I am not a fan of mechanical safeties on guns that are designed to be internally safe. XDM, Walther, PPQ, the Glocks, and all of those striker-fired guns. So I didn't order that particular variation. But if you're wanting a mechanical safety, it is available. A few of the safety features that are available on this, it does have the internal drop safety plunger piston that's become common on most striker guns today. And it has the split trigger for inertial pull protection. And I turn it so you can see the little toggle, similar to many of the others that are out there. And it has a flat face. So instead of a curved trigger, it has a flat face. And this is something that the MC1 had a more conventional curved trigger, this flat face trigger. These are becoming all the rage, and you'll see there is an over-travel stop right there. From a trigger perspective, we'll go ahead and pull the magazine out and make it easier to cycle it. The trigger is a pretty nice trigger, and by the way, you'll notice there's a kind of an elongated trigger guard, which would be suitable if you have gloves. There are serrations at the front of the trigger guard, and there's kind of a little landing pad here for your finger on either side. And notice there are no ambi features. But back to the trigger. So there's a decent amount of take up. It's a little bit sticky 
but not bad. A small amount of creep, and then a nice break. So the trigger is good, but it's not stellar. Now, one thing that you do find though is it's got a relatively short reset, and you're right on the wall, and off the reset there is zero creep. It's right there. So they've got a really nice reset and a decent mainline trigger. At the range, I found the trigger worked quite well, and it was very easy to use it, stay on target, and get repeatable firing with it. And I also failed to mention, you have a reversible mag catch so that you can, you can make the mag catch fl uh, friendly to lefties, but it doesn't have the ambi slide stop slide release and some of the other features that are becoming popular these days on many different guns. And two things I may have overlooked, the weight of the gun is 21 ounces, and as you can see, it does have a single slot Picatinny rail. And that single slot pattern is not going to be a problem. There's lots of manufacturers out there that have adapted to that single slot. So you'll be able to put lights, lasers, and all sorts of cool things on this if that's what you're wanting to do. Overall, it's going to be an easy gun to customize for your use. And just like the MC1 SC, this has been reliable. From round one till we stopped, it just worked. No malfunctions, no ammo sensitivity. It just does what it's supposed to do. And I did also possibly neglect to mention that both the front and rear sights are dovetailed, so you can change them out. If you're thinking about night sights, you know, go ahead and get the one that comes with them, because those True Glow sights are really nice sights. But if all you're able to get is the regular sight one and you want the night sights, it's easy to swap them out. And of course, you know True Glow makes a sight that'll fit it, so that kind of makes that part easier. I'm going to go and show you how to take it apart. These do disassemble a little different than you're used to with most guns and they call it their safe tape down mechanism. And the slide and the barrel are stainless steel. So, and then covered with the, whether you, if you get the polished one, of course it's polished. Otherwise it's got the DLC coating. These are actually pretty easy to disassemble and reassemble and maintain. What's not easy to do is do it on camera. Simply because there's different points of this, you have to have it turned correctly towards you. So I'm gonna start by, I'm gonna lock it back and then this little button I need to push, and I kind of have to push it in the center and get it far enough down to push the striker down to unlock it so I can slide it off. And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is if I turn it to face me and then pop it off. If I try to turn it so that it's faced easy to see on the camera, it, it you can't get it. You can't get the right angle on it. Once you do that, you just catch the striker sear hook, pull the striker out, and then the gun comes right apart. Putting it back together is equally easy. Make sure you center the recoil spring or it'll hang up. But that's that's pretty much true of all the striker guns. Lock it back. And then we're going to put the striker back in it. And the way you do that is with the striker sear hook facing towards you or into that groove, just push it down. And what I'm going to need to do now is I'm going to need to use this little piece to push the striker down enough to clear. You'll see it right there. You see kind of a groove. It's kind of hard to see it, but you, that little groove, the ears of this are going to ride in right here at the back. And you push it in. Now, that's another one. I'm just going to have to turn it towards me in order to be able to do it. And it can be a little bit cumbersome, but then it pops back in. And once you get used to it turned towards you, it's really easy to do. I'm going to now resume with it already taken apart, because I tried to do this live on camera, and it was it, I was trying to show and it just wasn't working. So that's how to take apart, disassemble. Now I'll show with it fully disassembled what the internal components like look like and then pick back up. Got a single recoil spring. It's kind of a wafer style spring. 3.9 inch stainless steel barrel that is very well machined. You see, really nice, clean, smooth rifling. Turn it around a little bit so you can get a view of the different parts of it. And one thing Mossberg has done very well with these guns, they're manufacturing to the same quality standards they manufacture their shotguns. And you can see that it has a nice feed ramp. It's basically what I like to call machine polished. It's not a mirror finish, but it is nice and smooth. This one has not had any ammo sensitivity, and it's worked quite well, it's whatever we wanted to feed it. And when you look at the slide, a little wear here from the barrel hood as we ran it. Here's your striker block piston, so part of the drop safety mechanism. And overall, 
pretty straightforward and simple. Well designed, nice and smooth. And other than these marks from the barrel hood moving back and forth, there's no tool marks or excessive markings. Reassembling it is relatively easy. I'll put this back together and then I'll show you the frame. So I got the slide back together. When you get into the frame, it's actually pretty simple. It's got nice, large, long, solid guide rails at the front. And it's kind of got a unique setup at the back. You've got two guide rails on this side that are separated and one over here. And then the fire control group is back here. They had to do that to clear some of the fire control componentry. The back one doesn't do as much work, doesn't need to do as much work. Most of the force is taken up here. So that's plenty of rail. And of course, you've got nice robust rails up at the front. And then on the trigger bar, you've got the piston, the, the hook for operating that drop safety piston. So it's a pretty well designed gun. So if I put the flush mag in it, set it upside down, I'm going to bring its little brother out. This is the MC1SC. This is the first one that they released, the subcompact. And you'll see that it, you are having a little bit taller grip to make room for that larger mag and the additional capacity. And you've got a little bit longer on your slide and barrel. And you do gain the single slot rail, which is not present on the SC. So the subcompact, if you want to put lights and lasers on it, you're going to be forced to go to a trigger guard type laser. Whereas on the MC2, you can do pretty much anything that's out there. There's, a, there's dozens of lights and lasers that are designed to fit on a setup like that. So it all depends on whether you want the capacity and the, the flexibility or you want the ultimate in small size. Both of these guns have been proven to be reliable. They're easy to shoot well. The sights are easy to see. They're inexpensive. And with pricing on it in the high threes, low fours, it really does compete very favorably with the other contenders in this particular territory. And uh, you can get into this style gun for a little bit less money and, and still get something that's going to be solid and nice, trustworthy gun. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, all over the place. Thanks.